everyone welcome to this updated video i hope you're doing fantastic now we'll be taking a look at what is happening across the north atlantic there we can see that front which still extends into the caribbean it brought quite a bit of rainfall to parts of jamaica yesterday and uh, the rainfall activity is only shifting to the east so other areas may experience some substantial rainfall activity today and we'll be looking at that the rainfall forecast and also the wind forecast as well and I want to talk about something else that models have been showing. So I don't know if you guys remember earlier this week, I think it was around Sunday when I made that updated video speaking about the fact that GFS has been showing that we may see an increase in moisture and maybe even a potential system developing in the vicinity of the northeastern Caribbean islands. Now, other models are showing that increase in moisture. And even on the latest uh, outlook map from the Climate Prediction Center, the area is highlighted for increased rainfall activity. Activity. But the question is, could we actually see development take place in early March? The last time that happened was 115 years ago. So not exactly 116 as yet because we haven't reached March. So it's been over a century since the last tropical cyclone that developed in March in the North Atlantic Basin. So it's been quite some time. And in February, if we should have something even try to form in the end of February, the 28th, 29th, the last February system was back in 1952. That's over 70 years ago. But uh, given the fact that those sea surface temperatures out there are well above average, way warmer than they should be at this time of year, it is certainly not impossible. So I will be talking more about that later in the video. But for now, let's move on to that satellite imagery and focus on the Caribbean. So we can see that cold front, as I said, is still moving through. Uh, it brought its impacts to some areas and now that it is making its way out once uh, once the boundary is passing there's that cooler air setting into some areas and we also see those cloud patches moving across parts of the lesser antilles which may be bringing some rainfall to some areas such as the leeward islands uh antigua barbuda even toward montserrat and over into the virgin islands even parts of puerto rico as well and then we see that associated activity with that front making its way across parts of hispaniola so as we're going to be heading through today, this is the rainfall forecast and we can see that the map becomes quite colorful within some areas. So in terms of the Caribbean islands, uh, we can see Hispaniola going toward Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and then uh, further up north toward the Turks and Caicos Islands. There may be some substantial rainfall activity today. Some areas may experience some instances of heavy downpours. And then again, with those patches of clouds moving through, for parts of the Lesser Antilles and even the ABC Islands as well, there may be some passing showers at times. And then down to Northern South America, it will be mostly dry and quiet for the most part, especially for parts of the Guyanas, Venezuela and parts of Southern Colombia. But toward the Pacific coast of Colombia as well as over in parts of Costa Rica and Panama, we see that it gets a bit more colorful there. So there may be some additional rainfall up to around two or three inches within those areas. And with a lot of heavy rain, flooding is most certainly possible. But uh, for the rest of the Central American territories, much is not expected, although there may be some additional rainfall in parts of the uh, northern part of Honduras and even near the Bay Islands as well. For Jamaica, much of that rain has moved through. There may be some additional showers today, though, but things will be on the drier side for much of Cuba, the Cayman Islands, up toward parts of the Bahamas, as well as Florida. But as I mentioned, that cooler air is setting in. So the nights through pretty much the rest of this week are likely to be a lot cooler than normal. In terms of the winds, as I said, with the boundary passing, those winds are kicking up in the Western Caribbean. So especially uh, offshore Central America, Nicaragua, and within the vicinity of uh, San Andreas and Providencia, the winds are definitely kicking up there up to 25 knots with higher gusts. And even later today, eventually for parts of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands as well, winds are likely to be kicking up from the north. Also seeing that some of those gusty winds are possible within parts of the Bahamas, but over into the Eastern Caribbean, it's going to be more tranquil in terms of the wind. So today's not going to be too crazy with those winds, but as we head into tonight and tomorrow, that may change. Finally, we're going on to what the models are showing in terms of that potential system. Now, GFS has been on and off about this because it has been showing that increase in moisture for some time now. But in terms of whether we could see an airflow pressure closing off and uh, actually developing into maybe a subtropical cyclone, it's been very on and off about that. So this was the forecast yesterday evening. And uh, there we can see that aerial flow pressure forming all that moisture. 
potential subtropical cyclone there. But then this morning, this is what GFS is showing, just all that scattered moisture within that general area, not showing anything defined out there. So GFS has been very on and off about this. And as for Euro, Euro is certainly showing that trough developing. We certainly see a lot of that moisture well to the northeast of the Caribbean, but Euro is not expecting that we'll see a closed low pressure system out there. And the main reason for that would be uh, the wind shear, those upper level winds, and that's the biggest inhibiting factor in the off season months. The wind shear being very strong and dominant out there. We're seeing all these red shadings and uh, that is indicating those very strong upper level winds and that usually helps to prevent tropical cyclone activity and it's at its highest within the off season months however as we head towards hurricane season between june and november there's a substantial decrease and that is what allows for tropical cyclone activity to take place within that time so it's really the wind chair that would be preventing any development right now also the dry air uh, with those plumes of Saharan dust moving across the Atlantic, but mostly that wind shear. However, should we have development, as I mentioned earlier, it's been over a century since the last system developed in the month of March, and it was uh, classified as Hurricane 1 because a tropical cyclone naming didn't begin until the early 1950s, and it was back in 1908 when the last March tropical cyclone developed in the Atlantic Basin. So it made its way across the Northeastern Isles, Lesser Antilles as a Category 2 hurricane. So it wasn't just a subtropical storm, but it was a hurricane. And uh, in terms of any sorts of confidence increase about something potentially developing, this is the latest forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. And this map was updated yesterday. Now the green shading indicates the chance of above average rainfall and we're focusing on the Atlantic. So for week two, where it says week two over in the Atlantic, notice that green shading right there indicating that chance of above average rainfall up to 65% chance of that happening. So pretty substantial chance right there and I would not be surprised. I'm definitely expecting that increase in moisture as models have been showing it. But in terms of scene development, very, very hesitant about that. There's no guarantee whatsoever of that actually happening, guys. But GFS is on and off about something developing a closed low pressure system for men. This run, it may be showing it. The following run, it may not be showing anything at all. But it is most certainly not something impossible because of how warm the Atlantic is right now. It shouldn't even be this warm. So it is well above average. And with those temperatures, that would definitely be helping out with development but of course guys i'm here to keep you posted again there is absolutely no guarantee of something developing next week but i'm just pointing out the fact that models are showing that increase in moisture and at times the gfs model wants to close off that that trough into maybe a subtropical cyclone out there and so that is what i wanted to share with you in this update video i really do hope that you found it to be quite informative however if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.